Hello, everyone. Uh, the other day, I was uh, reading an article that was talking about doors and poor design of the uh, hardware on them, in, in particular, the handles and so on. Uh, in a lot of cases, they've got um, uh, pull handles on the side where you need to push, and uh, that just tends to cause confusion. You end up with people pulling the door, discovering it doesn't open, and then pushing. Um, or they'll push on the pull side because they're used to all these handles being the wrong way around and it doesn't open, so then, you know. Anyway, um, it, uh, it, it really comes down that uh, I don't really want to talk about bad hardware design on door handles. Um, uh, you know, that's easily, you can research that on your own if you, if you want to. Uh, what I what it got me thinking about though was the direction that doors swing, and why does it sw the doors swing the way they do? Well, uh, I don't know why uh, doors seem to be set up to prefer a right hand swing uh, on going in and uh, uh, you know left hand swing when you're going out. I, I don't. Uh, I don't understand uh, why that would necessarily be the case, and it may not be the case. Um, the left or right aspect of it, though, is often dictated by the geometry of the entryway, um, uh, where, uh, you know, if you're, uh, you generally don't want the door to open and block off the room you're entering. So if, you, if you've got a wall on the left, then the door should probably swing to the left. If you've got a wall on the right, it should probably swing to the right, and then you've got full access to the room. Uh, although, in some cases, you might want to have it swing the other way, depending on specific geometry, um, you know, outside or inside uh, the room that you're entering. Uh, so the left or right aspect of it, though, that's not so much what I want to talk about, but I, I will say that uh, I did have an instance where I had to think about it, uh, and that was when we were putting storm doors on our house, um, and notably um, at the front door. Now, typically, uh, we, uh, we would prefer to have the hinges for both on the same side, uh, and that usually works out well because the geometries on the inside and the outside uh, are usually different, uh, or not different. You know, and what what I mean is, uh, you know, like on our back doors, the uh, the doors swing. If you're looking inward, they swing to the left, but there's a wall to the left, and the main room is to the right. And on the outside, we've got on the upper level one, there's a a railing for a deck and on the lower level one there's a retaining wall. So it makes sense that the doors would swing to the same side, you know, both the storm door and the uh, main door. On the front, however, uh, on the inside there's a wall on the right as you're looking in, but on the outside there's a wall on the left and there's open space on the right, but on the inside the open space is on the left. And that means if you're, and because there's a wall directly in front of the entryway that's uh, protecting the landing on the stairs going up to the second level, don't get me started on how absolutely fucking stupid that the design of this entryway is. Uh, the entryway is almost, uh, almost big enough to hold the door swing, uh, the interior door is swing, and a pair of shoes uh, without having a conflict. Um, and to close the door once you've come in, you pretty much have to step onto the carpet with your wet or muddy shoes. So, yeah, really bad design. Anyway, uh, designers of that sort of thing should be shot and banned from designing anything as well. Uh, remember where, you're, where your building's going to be. Uh, you need a much bigger entryway than a postage stamp in a climate that actually has weather. Uh, Southern California maybe doesn't, but most other parts of the world do. Anyway, that's that's not what I want to talk about. Uh, because of the geometry on the inside and the outside where the space is, if you're bringing anything large in, you're going to have to angle it from the right to the left. And if you had your storm door opening to the right, the storm door would be in the way. You'd have to bend your big object to get it through, or you'd have to dehang the storm door. 
So because of that, we actually hung the storm door so it swung to the left. Now, uh, that confuses guests a lot of the time because they will ring the door, and because the doorbell is actually on the uh, left-hand side because it was there uh, before we had the storm door. So they'll ring the doorbell, and then they'll stand on the left right at the hinge for the storm door. And then... Uh, you know they'll be baffled so maybe we should move that uh, that button over to the right but it's a real pain in the butt to do so we haven't now we set it up this way for practical reasons and it turns out for the most part it works and uh, uh, you know and and it generally confuses the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and so on that uh, can't understand what no soliciting means on the on the sign pasted on the door. Anyway, that was a practical consideration for which direction, uh, left or right, a door would swing. And, you know, that's the sort of thing, you, you do need to consider that when you're setting up a door. But an, a bigger consideration that you want to look at is whether it should swing in or out. Should it swing into the room or out of the room? Now, there's a few considerations uh, for uh, inward or outward swing. Uh, one of the big ones, and I think this is the reason why most doors to houses swing inward, is that your typical hinges are basically, uh, they have a pin, a pin that, uh, where the hinge pivots. And you can dehang the door by popping the pin out and lifting the hint, and the hinges come apart. And that's quite useful. Uh, that's a very useful uh, ability. If you can take the door off, uh, you can get extra space. You need to bring something in or something like that. Now, because the hinges have to be on the side of the door that it swings to, uh, and those pins have to be. You know they're they're visible. Uh, if the door swung outward, those those hinge pins would be on the outside of the door, and that would mean anybody with a hammer and screwdriver or equivalent tools could come in, pop the hinge pins, dehang the door, walk into your house. Then they could rehang the door, and they carefully realign all of the, the the deadbolt and everything, rehang the door, put the hinge pins back. And you wouldn't even necessarily know you'd been robbed. Whereas, if the door swings inward, the hinge pins are on the inside of the building, and the door itself protects the hinges from tampering. And therefore, forced entry tends to become a little bit more obvious. And it's not going to be done by simply dehanging the door. Uh, so I think that's the big reason the doors swing inward in houses. Security. It also tends to be helpful if they don't swing outward, if your uh, entryway is right up against a sidewalk or a street or something like that, or a corridor in an apartment building. As if it swings outward in those cases, you interfere with traffic passing outside. And it's a particularly big issue in an apartment building where opening the door can actually block the hallway. And if you block the hallway, well, you're gonna piss people off and in an emergency setting, everybody exiting at the same time, blocking the hallway, is not going to be helpful. So, okay, that's probably why most private residence doors swing inward. That's probably also why most office doors swing inward. So that they can be locked and the hinges can't be tampered with. So uh, that's probably why in most cases in commercial buildings, uh, the doors to the individual units open inward, even though it might be better if they opened outward for ease of egress in a panic situation like a fire alarm. But in most office situations, you also don't have large, like really large numbers of people behind each one of those doors. So having to pull the door to exit is not as big of an issue in those circumstances. Now, you would think you'd want the doors to open inward for shops and so on at street level as well uh, for that same security reason. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is a, uh, 
uh, a safety factor involved there where you tend to, you're going to tend to have a lot more people in the the various places that aren't familiar with things and they're and for safety reasons they uh, they do have to have doors that open outward so that it's pushed to exit in an emergency situation and the reason for that is you've got a bunch of people piled up against you and you're trying to exit a building to get away from a fire say if everyone's pushing against you you can't pull the door and in a panic situation you're not going to be able to get even two or three people to back off so you can pull the door and get get everybody out so uh they they're set up so that uh you know you push the door you can no matter how many people are piled up against you from in back you can push the door and it will open and then you can all get out might fall down all over each other but at least you can actually move forward uh, now that does have the same potential security issues and it also has the same issues with potentially uh, blocking traffic and causing accidents during normal operations. You know, you, you know, a door opening suddenly in your face as you're walking down the street, for instance, and uh, you know that would be painful. And that's why a lot of uh, commercial premises have uh, recessed doors uh, so that they're not uh, opening out into the street. Uh, they're opening out into an area set aside for the door and the only people that are likely to get hit by the door are people that are actually trying to use the door and not paying proper attention um, but that does still raise a security issue and if you take a careful look most of these commercial doors have different types of a different style of hinge that is much harder to tamper with and as a result having them open outward isn't uh, as big of a security issue as it might seem to be because they're not using that standard um, you, you know uh, hinge pin type uh, construction uh, there may there probably still is uh, pins in there uh, but they're not removable right so uh, over overall uh, it probably doesn't impair the security, but it certainly improves the survivability in, the, in, in an emergency situation. Um, but even when you don't have those recessed doors, uh, they are going to open outward. Uh, the emergency exit doors will open outward in a uh, commercial setting uh, in most cases. So, uh, and that is, in fact, uh, I think it's required by the fire code in a lot of places. Uh, and I think most building codes require that recessed door structure for new construction or renovations uh, for that safety thing because it eliminates the uh, the safety implications and for a retail operation it's great because you've got built-in display cases as a result now that's basically what you've got there right? uh, why why do uh, doors on residences and private settings open inward it was originally probably a security thing to protect the hinges and it just stuck as a result and it's still a security thing to protect the hinges but it also has some other benefits, like you can peek out, you open your door a couple inches and peek at whoever's uh, rung your doorbell, for instance, and they're less likely to be able to uh, force their, their way in or something like that before you can slam the door shut again. Uh, now, of course, if the door opened outward, it would be harder yet for them to force their way in. But again, you've got that hinge issue. Uh, so we've stuck with that. Um, and so while even in cases where it might make, make more sense for the door to open outward, uh, it still will open inward in a lot of cases for just that reason, the security aspect to uh, you know, protect the hinges themselves. Now, there are a lot of cases where doors could swing both ways, uh, and sometimes they do. Uh, but for the most part, we tend to stick with doors opening in one direction. Uh, and I think that probably is safer because then you know that a particular door can only open in a single direction. So if you're on the push side, you know it's not going to, someone's not going to come running and shove it into your face or something like that. Uh, so while it might seem like a good idea that these double swing doors would be, uh, make sense, so that in an emergency situation you should push your way out. Uh, it's not necessarily any better overall, and also uh, there's, uh, you know, depending how you set that up, it might 
the door might be weaker as a result. Whatever uh, the, the th situation is, it does depend on what type of hinge system you're using. Uh, but anyway, uh, doors will do have a reason for swinging the inward or outward. And, uh, and the, the reason for the inward swing in a lot of cases, even where you would think it would be a bad idea, is actually pretty straightforward and practical. It's a safety mechanism uh, or security mechanism, and in some cases, safety. Uh, you don't want doors swinging outward into a hallway and blocking it uh, if you can avoid it. Uh, even in an emergency situation, an out outward swinging doors wouldn't be an improvement if you're blocking the hallway. So, uh, you know, in some cases, it really does make more sense for it to swing inward, even when you would think it would make more sense to swing out. But still, that security uh, point does have to win over safety in some circumstances. As with so many things, it's a trade-off. And it's a trade-off that we have uh, been able to uh, demonstrate isn't as big of a problem as it, could, as it might seem on paper, just through long years of that trade-off being in place. So... Well, sometimes these trade-offs are really difficult ones where uh, it's obvious that the trade for added security really does seriously impact safety or vice versa. In this case, the direction of the door swing has much less of an impact than you might think. Anyway, that's probably enough rambling on uh, doors. Uh, and uh, so I guess I'll, I'll leave it here. There, there really isn't all that much to say, uh, although it is a little more uh, complicated than you might have first thought. Uh, and there's actual reasons for the way, uh, the way things are uh, that, uh, that actually make sense when you actually think through them. Uh, anyway... Uh, that's all for this time. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications. Uh, with the, and I believe that's with that bell icon. I usually don't enable notifications because you know I can just go and look at my subscribe videos and all of them show up on the list. But if you want notifications, make sure to turn them on. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Uh, Apparently, it helps with exposure, and uh, uh, quite frankly, I think I'd be happy to manage to have a video with 25 dislikes on it. Uh, yeah, you know, it just uh, means 25 people are, are you know, bothered to uh, click on something, you know. Um, and, hey, it's engagement, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, it, leave a like or a dislike as you see fit. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.